So Charlie Munger has over a hundred mental models in his head that he switches between to solve problems in his business. It's what helped him and Warren scale Berkshire Hathaway to over a hundred billion dollars in worth. Mental models are our learned beliefs and thought processes to how we view life each day is the reason why some people might view similar images differently than others. Depending on where you grew up, your family members, or the things you watch on the internet, each of us has preconditioned ways of thinking. But in this video, we'll be going over seven different mental models that you can use to think like a genius like Charlie Munger did. Approach number one, Swiss Army Knife. A well-skilled carpenter often has many tools in his toolkit that all serve a specific purpose better than the others. When you need some nails to be hammered in, you use a hammer. The carpenter knows that depending on the job or challenge that needs to be done, there is a tool best suited for solving it. This is the relation of the Swiss Army Knife approach. Similar to how a Swiss Army Knife can handle many obstacles, we can also train our brains to have several methods of thinking whenever we encounter a difficult problem in our life. So instead of trying to use the same tool for every problem that comes our way, we should learn to equip our minds with several different tools or ways of thinking so that we can tackle any challenges that life may throw at us. And this is what these next six methods really are gonna help us do. Number two, probabilistic thinking. Probabilistic thinking is the idea of using math or logic to estimate the probability of something happening. We see this often in fields of statisticians or engineers. From using data, we can assume a solution based on the probability something is likely to occur either from history or the variable factors involved. For example, the odds of getting struck by lightning when it's raining outside are rather low. However, these odds can significantly increase if you were to carry a large metal rod around with you. Now this approach typically is pretty helpful when large data sets are available. History can tend to repeat itself, given the factors involved don't change a whole lot. But what if we don't have any data to go off of? Or what we're looking to solve has never occurred before in our lives? Well, that's when we can use reverse order thinking. Number three, reverse order thinking. Reverse order thinking allows us the ability to begin with the end in mind. Instead of trying to reason your way of how to solve a problem, we can begin with this solution and work backwards. If you'd like to, for example, run a sub three marathon one day, well, you'd first have to calculate the pace you need to run at and the amount of training that it would take. Now, reverse thinking can also help you reach a solution by contemplating the opposite of what you'd actually want to do. If your goal was to get fit for this summer, well, what actions would make you the opposite of fit? That would include eating lots of desserts, sitting and watching TV for long periods of time, and avoiding going to the gym. And by simply inverting these counterintuitive actions, we have a list and a solution to achieving our actual goal. But sometimes simply just knowing what we must do isn't enough. We can lack the motivation, or as I better like to refer it to as the internal energy to do the things we actually want. So how do we solve this? Four, activation energy. Well, for many people, we often consider the activation energy as the amount of energy it would take for a person to perform certain routines in our lives. However, there's a problem with this thinking. Each individual person actually has different levels of activation depending on the task. You might have been born with longer legs, which make it easier for certain people to run longer or faster. And we must consider what comes to each of us more naturally when looking to solve a problem. A method or solution for one person might not be the most optimal way that another person does it. So this mental model is about capitalizing on what inherent advantages you might have or over another person. And for some people, this can be something as simple like having more patience than others. Speaking of patience, one of the described eighth wonders of the world that Charlie Munger was a huge fan of was compounding. Five, compounding. If you were to invest $5,000 each year into a stock market that earned 8% each year of interest for just 10 years at the age of 25, well, you'd have over 700,000 by the age of 65. So the mental model of compounding simply means that it's the small compounding effects over the long run that really add up and exponentially create something large. I mean, take for example, even Mr. Beast. When he started making YouTube videos, he couldn't even afford a decent camera. 
But because he kept investing his time and energy back into YouTube, he is now able to spend a budget of over $2 million per video today. He has hundreds of millions of, subs of subscribers, a new upcoming Amazon show, and hundreds of employees working for him now. Mr. Beast is very powerful now because he has an army. Six, power of an army. The power of an army mental model means knowing how to use the people around you toward a similar mission. We are literally rebuilding every single set from Squid Game in real life. But the problem is some sets aren't realistic like this one and this one. So I called in these guys to help me bring them to life. We're gonna show you how it's done. So Sometimes all it takes is someone who is removed from the, from the situation to come in with a fresh pair of eyes that can help you solve a solution. Charlie Munger's favorite version of this is making friends with dead people. What he means by this is there's often problems in our lives that other people throughout history have already solved. So what Charlie Munger did most of the time was study and learn the ways other people before him thought about things. For example, how did Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Edison approach life for any problems they had? Sometimes we really won't have the solution, but we can use this idea of an army to help in our mission. Now there are consequences for everything we do. Sometimes having an army can hurt us in the long run, and that's what this next mental model helps us solve to do. Seven, second order thinking. Second order thinking as a mental model requires us to go out of our comfort zone to think outside of the box. It requires analyzing the potential impact of our decision into the future. Instead of just choosing the obvious or immediate benefits, it can often be wise to consider carefully when making decisions, as Ray Dalio describes it in his book, Principles, failing to consider second and third order consequences is the cause of a lot of painfully bad decisions. And it is especially deadly when the first inferior option confirms your own biases. Never seize on the first available option, no matter how good it seems, before you've asked questions and explored. But speaking of great books, if you feel like you're still a bit stuck in life without any progress, well then you might want to check out and read one of these other books to help you find that clarity. 